people who are starting to get the tapes and, or, you know, who had previously seen this on local television, it won't be on local television anymore, uh, but, uh, you know, I was thinking in my mind whether I should get in touch with uh, them up in New York and yeah, maybe run it up yeah. there for a while. But anyhow, you know, all things change and we're not going to worry about them. Uh, we've been talking about the Emerald Tablet. Um, strange and, you know, amazing in different ways. Uh, you know, not being able to prove anything as I... Because you can't. Um, but we've opened our minds to discussing things. And, you know, I get, um, I get people who will write and say, well, you know, you're reading this emerald tablet. Uh, you don't know, this guy that's interpreting this, uh, he's supposed to have gotten it from somebody else. And you don't know, maybe he made it. Maybe he did. I don't know. Uh, well, you're saying maybe uh, UFO forces didn't land. Maybe they didn't. And I don't know, that wasn't there. I don't know. But that doesn't in any way impact on the interest and need to look at things and look at what this person says is an interpretation and then compare it with other things. I mean, there's always people to say, you know, I, I was reading this book, uh, Twelfth Planet. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's Twelfth Planet by Zachariah Sitchin, in which he said definitely it was uh, aliens and UFOs who started off this whole thing. Well, of course, he gets a lot of people ripping him apart. Well, he, he interpreted this wrong. He made a mistake with that. And he made a mistake with all this kind of stuff. But, you know, when those same people come out and, you know, publicly say, well, yeah, there was no such person as Jesus. No. You know, I mean, maybe somebody did make something up. Maybe somebody did make them up. Maybe somebody made up the Bible. Maybe there was no Peter, Paul, and Mary. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but what you try to do is you try to look at things that are written, things that are presented, and then put them alongside of other things and see how they line up. You know, you look at one thing that might have been written 20,000 years ago with something else that's written 3,000 years ago. Did they take that from this or whatever? But it's like a great big puzzle. And it has to be something because all that we know is what has been given to us through the main religions. And, you know, we don't, really, we don't know anything. We haven't a clue other than to say we have faith. So what we're generally led to do is discount something because someone else or some other group said, hey, you better not listen to that. So, you know, we're not trying to sit here and decide whether this is right, whether it's wrong, but let's open the various doors and, and see what we find in each of these hidden rooms and use it as part of a, a piece of a gigantic puzzle. So what have we come along with so far? All right, <coughs> we'll look at the <coughs> first uh, slide here. And, and we were searching through the Emerald Tablet writings, which are about an alien force who comes in a UFO uh, using laser guns. I mean, it, you know, that's, that's interesting. Now, I don't know. As I said, I wasn't there. The second thing we found that the reason was that the aliens came was to bring civilization and light to the uh, uh, prehistoric people who were roaming around on the earth. And we also found that this alien force scattered their forces all over the earth. And of course, if they had UFOs, it would be very easy to get from, uh, you know, Egypt, which was called the land of Chem then, to South America or someplace else. Okay, in the next slide, we found uh, that they did wind up in South America. And... Uh, Oh, you, what happened? Oh, well, okay. All right, hold on, everybody. Oh. Uh, okay, but uh, we found that the, uh, according to the information we had, that this alien force 
did wind up in South America at the land of the Mayans. Mayans. And, and that would connect them to 2012. And, and, that's, and that's what I'm talking about. The person that wrote about the Emerald Tablet or interpreted it said nothing about the Mayans, nothing about December the 21st, 2012, but yet historically there is information of uh, this force in South America. Then number five, we found that Votan, who initially was considered no, no, you, you, you moved it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, but go back. Go back. Yeah, I know, but let's start over. I'm, yeah, I'm all messed. I'm all messed up. Yeah, I know, but it was the number on the side of the thing here. Go back to the start over. Okay, uh, and then we found in number five, uh, Votan, who we initially considered to be a Mayan, was portrayed by the Mayans in a carving depicting him as someone, you know, piloting a UFO. And number six, we connected the alien Toth with Jesus in statements that both made that were very similar. Uh, now in number seven, we connected Toth uh, also with Jesus, with symbols of the cross and the single eye, and then an interesting thing, as we see in number eight, we were able to connect the alien forces of the emerald with the book of Ezekiel, um, which appeared to be the same forces that were in the emerald tablet showing up in the Bible, because this toss of the emerald tablet had an inkhorn hanging from his side, and in Ezekiel, the leader of this UFO group had the same thing. And then in number nine, we connected Elijah as one of the forces of the Emerald Tablet, because in the Bible, he's shown leaving the earth in a UFO. And we also showed him calling down fire on the earth, as if it, you know, it was like a, a military person calling down fire from some kind of a, a flying um, you know, fortress machine, or whatever you want to call it. And then number 10, we connected Jesus to the Emerald because his very close friend was John the Baptist that Jesus knew was the previously mentioned Elijah who had flown in a UFO. And, and it, if nothing else, it just provided evidence that since Jesus was a close friend with somebody who flew in a UFO, he more than likely could have been part of the same Emerald Force. At least it was a possibility. Then in number 11, we connected the tetrahedron, which Toth holds in his right hand, with photon, which is subatomic. And in our next slide, we connected the pyramids of Egypt with the Mayan pyramids uh, and connected the emerald statement that the pyramids were for magic force with scientific evidence of that from a scientist named Stephen Miller. Number 13, we connected the uh, classic Greek culture with the land of Chem through the migration of what is now Greece by the Placidians. This connected the classic Greeks to the emerald. And, it, and it, you see, you have to understand, it, it does that because, you know, the, the Greeks who know all of this stuff about philosophy and science, and you know, they weren't there, and then people migrated from uh, this land, what is now Egypt, which was called the land of Chem. So you, you could assume that these were the people who came from this UFO force. And then we connected the 32 thrones of the Emerald Force to the 32 paths of the Jewish Kabbalah. So even if, um, you know, the person that interpreted this, uh, you know, was mistaken about something, how did he know, or, you know, the 32 thrones or what are mentioned in the Emerald Force turn up in the Jewish Kabbalah. Now what I want to do first here is kind of line up our cast of characters because the names will come flying at you hot and heavy and I, and I want to try to minimize the confusion. So let's take a look here. The Emerald Alien UFO Force Commander we will call Alien. That's the name. The Egyptians call him Toth. 
the Greeks call them Hermes. And the most interesting to me, the Hellenists call him Hermes Trismegistus. Hermes Trismegistus. So that's, that's what we've got here. We've got what we would call an alien and a UFO called by the Egyptians Toth, the Greeks Hermes, and by the Hellenists Hermes Trismegistus. But the concentration that we have to make it, if we're going to be able to understand this, the concentration has to be on the Emerald Force UFO commander that we call the alien. So whenever in this meeting you hear the name of Toth, think of the UFO guy. When you hear Hermes, think of the UFO guy. When you, think, when you hear Hermes Trismegistus, think of the UFO guy. So our quest is, and, and, and really has to be, what did the alien emerald UFO force which landed on Earth do? If, if such a thing happened, what did they do? What were they responsible for? So just keep one name and one name only as, um, as your point of focus on this, and that would be the alien. Now, I came across a diagram referencing Kabbalah that I wanted to share with you because I think it also backs up the proposal that the 32 thrones of the Emerald Tablet connect to the 32 paths of the Jewish Kabbalah. First, let's take a look again at the Emerald reference to 32. Um, it says, 32 were there of the children, sons of light who had come among men, seeking to free them from the bondage of darkness. They placed in the center a ray of great power, life-giving, filling with power all who came near it. Thirty-two places for each of the children of light placed so that they were bathed in the radiance and filled with the life from the eternal light. So from the alien commander, whoever it might be, the UFO guy, we have 32 sons of light and 32 places each for the children of light. Then last week, if you remember, I provided here an overhead of a copy of a book written by Rabbi Pinson. And the book is about Kabbalah, which is the mystical side of Judaism, and it has you know, intrigued many people, including the Madonna, the singer. Now, here, the connection to the 32 of the Emerald Tablet ju jumps right at you because we look at this book, which is the 32 Gates of Wisdom, written by Rabbi Pinson, and it says, Kabbalah, the tree of life is formed from 32 paths, 10 objective, and known as the Sifra, and 22 subjective that connect pairs of Sifra together. So here, then we have this Jewish race, which obviously at one time came from that also land of Chem. You know, they, they had the exodus out of Egypt, as the, as the mythology goes. And they wind up with the 32 paths of wisdom, and from the UFO commander, we have the word of the 32 points of the 32 paths. So let us now look at that same slide of the uh, book by Rabbi Pinson, along with the Kabbalah information. And we'll also place uh, right on it the words from the Emerald Tablet, which we see there. So we have the 32 gates of wisdom in the book. We have the Kabbalah 32 paths of the tree of life. And then the emerald 32 places for each of the children of life. So there's a connection there. And that's all we can do with this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, we, 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 what we can do is we can take Bible stuff, we can take Kabbalah stuff, we can take Judaism, stuff, whatever it is, and we can, we can track it back and say, this is where this came from. And right now, and, and who knows where the path may veer, but right now, it's taking us right to that landing pad where this fleet of UFOs came down in what is now Egypt. Because there's an obvious connection here between the Emerald Force who came in UFOs and Kabbalah, which is a, a Jewish mysticism. Now, I, find, I found a site that presented a diagram 
of the various sources that were in some way connected to Kabbalah, which is quite interesting. And it, 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 I'm sure the letters are a little small for you to see, but if you go in the very uh, left, in the upper left-hand corner, you see Egypt connecting to Hermetica, and then connecting to the Stoics, and then it goes on to all things connecting to Judaism, Christianity, and everything. But what's interesting about it is that if you look at that block in the extreme upper left-hand corner, that regardless of all the rest of the different influences that finally attach to Kabbalah, it all starts from Egypt, or the land of Chem, where the Emerald UFO forces were supposed to have landed. So everything again starts there. So connect that in your head. The land of Chem, which is now Egypt, is the UFO landing place. And Kabbalah connections, which is Judaism, mysticism, all trace back to there as the starting point. See? So the development of Kabbalah out of Egypt is the land of Chem. And then there is that statement of Hermetica, or Hermetics, okay? And that connects right from Egypt vertically there. And then there's over here, which is interesting, is the Greek Pythagoras. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But let's stay with this for just a minute. The alien leader of the UFO force and the writer of the Emerald Tablet in Egyptian lore is referred to as Toth, the ibis-headed being with a cross and single eye, which we've connected to Jesus. And, and this here, next, is the symbol of this particular mythological figure. So this figure does nothing but give us an ancient representation of symbols connecting to this UFO commander. Okay? I mean, there's no way that... You see what you have to do here? You have to understand that what you have are these ancient concepts of people talking, and this happened, and this came down, and then you have writers trying to put together some kinds of symbols to describe what had occurred so many thousands of years ago in prehistory. So that's simply a, a symbolic representation of the UFO commander in symbols. Now let us go and see the connection of the Egyptian Toth, our UFO commander, with the Hermes alien commander. Okay, John. Toth was considered one of the most important deities of the Egyptian pantheon, often depicted with the head of an ibis, and we know that. His feminine counterpart was Shashat. His chief shrine was at Kemenu, where he led the local pantheon, later renamed Hermopolis by the Greeks. Now, look at this last sentence. In reference to him through the Greeks' interpretation that he was the same as Hermes. You go on a Google and uh, put in Toth and input image, and you'll see a picture uh, of Toth. You go on Google and put an image and put in Hermes, and you'll see a picture of Toth. The same exact person, okay? Uh, now, you have what they call Hermetic Kabbalah, and we will track that, and the information that Toth was this UFO commander, also being called by the Greeks Hermes. So, you, you got the whole bunch. You got the alien, and you got Toth, from Egypt, and you got Hermes, Greek. And it's just the way that writers in different cultures identify the same people. Now, notice that his shrine is at Kemenu, which is the land of Kem. Okay, that's where the UFO fleet landed. What they called the land of Kem, and that stuck until finally it was called Egypt, and also renamed Hermopolis, which is the city of eight. That's what it means. So the plot continues to thicken as we read about Hermes now of the Emerald because there is an amazing connection that we're going to find in Wikipedia. 
Now, don't be confused by names. We're all talking about the same UFO person. We're talking about somebody in a uniform, uh, and a helmet, goggles, ray gun attached, the whole bit, you know. But then descriptions that come from writers in, you know, Middle Eastern or wherever you want to say, ancient writers, trying to somehow put down, what the heck was this fiery chariot? That, you know? So, just think of that UFO come here. Now, what is so interesting, which you're about to see here, is that this alien UFO commander somehow connected to the great Greek philosopher Plato. Now look at this here. This comes from Wikipedia. He, meaning Hermes, Toth, the UFO guy, was considered the heart. And the heart is the mind, as Egyptians saw it, in tongue of Ra, as well as the means by which Ra's will was translated into speech. He also has been likened to the logos of Plato and the mind of God. So look what we've got involved now. We've got Logos and we've got Plato, this uh, great uh, Greek philosopher. And, 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 and we see hmm, this makes sense because the alien forces as Placidians came from the land of Chem or Egypt into the land that is now called Greece. Okay, so that, that, that makes sense. So then, the roots of classic Greek minds such as Aristotle, Plato, Timocrates, and all that, was in the land of Chem, which was the landing base for this UFO fleet. So this gives us reason to understand the great scientific knowledge of the Greeks. As we often wondered, how did they know all this stuff about quantum and... And, 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 and atoms and all of this stuff, and nobody else knew that. How, how could this be? Well, now, if they were part of that force that moved from that Egypt into what is now called Greek, well, of course they were an advanced super society from another dimension. So now, remember, the UFO commander is Hermes in Greek, and we follow the various connections to what is called the Hermetic Kabbalah. Did you get to that? No, you're, you're there. Hold it. You, 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 you. Okay. Um, okay. Now, let us look at two things here. The word Logos and Plato. No, no, no. No, no. Just stay right. Don't, don't move. Because, and Toth, if we look at Plato, okay, uh, he was a classical Greek philosopher, mathematician, writer of philosophical dialogues, and founder of the Academy in Athens, which is the first institution of higher learning in the Western world. Now here, then, we have the Placidians, who came from the land of Chem, where the UFO landed, or the fleet of UFOs landed. They came and put together this place we now call Greece, and out of this, we find this guy, Plato, who comes up with the first institution of higher learning in the Western world. Well, it, nobody ever says who taught Plato all this stuff. But if he was descended or part of the group from that emerald UFO force, then his advanced learning would be understood. Okay? So we're connecting Greek science with the alien UFO and emerald tablets, and we see Plato connected to Hermes, and he finds this institution of higher learning. Now think of that. And then consider the very reason that the emerald tablet says the alien UFOs came to Earth in the first place. Here we have Plato and his heritage having come from the place where the UFOs landed, starting the first institution of higher learning, and what does the Emerald Tablet say was the purpose of the UFO landings in the first place? I sent for me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions, that from the womb of time, wisdom might rise again in her children. Upward grew into the light of knowledge the children of Chem, watered by the rains of my wisdom. So what was it for? 
We came to bring them wisdom. We came to bring them knowledge. We came to bring them understanding. And we find out that Plato, who's whatever, came from that same UFO landing force, was the one to found in the history of this earth the first institution of higher learning. So there seems to be, just out of reasonableness, a connection here. So we see the purpose of the invasion. And, and then uh, we see uh, Hermes as the leader of this force, according to the Greeks, connected to Plato. Now, let us look again at that reference to Toth or Hermes or the alien, um, and, and just look at something else. I wanna, let's go to the next one. He was considered the heart and tongue of Ra as well. He was also been likened to the logos of Plato. Now see that word there, logos. That word is extremely interesting. Most Christians who see the word in the Bible mistakenly interpret it as word. That's not what it means. Logos does not mean the word. Let's see what logos means. Logos, an important term in philosophy, analytical psychology, rhetoric, and religion. Heraclitus, 475 BC, established the term as the source and fundamental order of the cosmos. Okay, so we had the logos of Plato. Plato connected to the UFO Emerald Landing Force and the logos of Plato, meaning the fundamental order of the cosmos. Now look at another word there. If you go down about, oh, right, right after Heraclitus, it says the Stoic philosophers. Do you see that? The Stoic philosophers identified the, to, uh, the divine animating principle pervading the universe. So logos means the entire cosmos, all life, the electrical, subatomic, photonic. That's what, that's what it means. And then Philo adopted it into Jewish philosophy. So you see that what came from this UFO landing force is extremely advanced scientific culture. Uh, as they moved, uh, where these classic Greek scientists and the likes of Plato came from, and, and all of a sudden they're talking about, you know, uh, 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 photons and electrons and atoms and all of these things, and even Zeno teaching quantum physics. How could that be possible? Well, now we see, because we see who they really were, you know. So there are several interesting points here. Logos as the fundamental order of the cosmos, the word stoic philosopher. Let's put that word up on the board. I want you to pay attention to that word, stoic, okay, philosophers. And they identified it with the animating principle. The animating principle means you can move. How do you move? Because of the universal cosmonic electricity, the photonic stuff, okay. Judaism then comes under the influence of the Hellenists who wrote the Bible. Look at that last line. You see what it says? After Judaism came under Hellenistic influence, Philo adopted the term. This is extremely important. Judaism comes under the influence of the Hellenists, and the Hellenists were the Greeks who wrote the Bible in Alexandria, and then this stuff is introduced into Jewish philosophy. So again, you have a direct Kabbalah, a direct Judaism uh, impact from the Emerald Force. You can call them Toth or Hermes or alien officer, Plato, Stoics, Hellenists, Jews, all of that stuff. Don't even think about it. Just picture in your mind these UFO fleet coming down and landing on planet Earth and then the aliens getting out and starting all of this stuff. 30,000 years ago. Now, if we go back to the diagram we looked at a little while ago, I want you to see that word Stoics. Okay, if you look right over here, so you got Egypt and Hermetica at the top and, and left, and just over to the right between them, you see that word Stoics. Okay, we look at Stoics, 
we, we see it a branch of Greek philosophy. And as you can see, it's closely connected to the land of Kama, the land of the UFOs, because it's near Egypt. But let's see who the Stoics were. Okay. All right. In this next one. Okay. Stoicism was a school of Hellenistic philosophy. Now, I want you to look at something that's extremely important here. Founded in Athens by Zeno of Sidium. Zeno was a quantum physicist 4,000 years ago. If you go into any uh, bookstore and pick up a book on quantum physics, go back to the index, you'll see the word Zeno. Okay? It's a school of Hellenistic philosophy. And remember, it was the Hellenists who wrote the Bible. Now, get this. And this is what really makes this interesting. The Stoics considered destructive emotions to be the result of errors in judgment in that a sage or person of moral and intellectual perfection wouldn't undergo such emotions. Stoics were concerned with the active relationship between cosmic determinism and human freedom and the belief that it is virtuous to maintain a will that is in accord with nature. Now, this is so, so, so very important because, remember, we're connecting all of these people with the alien force. We're saying that the alien force UFO'd over to South America where the Mayans, or became the Mayans, or whatever, and Paco Votan, and the whole thing about December the 21st, 2012, has to do with what? Paco Votan saying that the problem is that we're losing our connection with nature, and if you see the Stoic philosophy that was of Greece, which came from that same place which we've placed as the center of the UFO landing, was that it is virtuous to maintain a will that is in accord with nature. Now, you, a lot of people will say, oh, well, well, you know, what does that mean? I'm kind to animals? Yes. I'm kind to, to the trees? Yes. And all of this kind. But it means something else. It is in a will that is not coming from the politicians, from the schools, from the churches, from uh, whoever government. It's coming from here. That's nature. It is the true instinct that lights within you in your meditative state. We'll get to that a while. But the Stoics said one must be in accord with nature. And we know that a force from the original UFO left Chem or Egypt, wound up in the land of Mayans. And what did Pakel Votan teach there? Accord with nature. Um, Joan, Stoics presented their philosophy as a way of life. And they thought that the best indication of an individual's philosophy was not what a person said, but how he or she behaved. Stoic doctrine was a popular and durable philosophy with a following throughout Greece and the Roman Empire from its founding until the closing of all philosophy schools in 529 AD. And take a look at this. By the order of Emperor Justinian, who perceived their pagan character to be at odds with his Christian faith. See? So nothing has changed, really, has it? Going back thousands of years. The great philosophy schools are closed because of a Christian. And he considered it pagan. But now this is really interesting, because we've attached Pakavotan, nature, the Stoics, nature. And what does the word pagan mean? Here we see paganism means a country dweller is a word with several meanings, but it had to do with the closeness to nature of rural people. And you see what it says? People who are close to nature are more resistant to Christianity than those who live in urban centers and are cut off from the cycles of nature. So and in, in the broadest definition, it says pagan denotes everything that is not abramonic religions. That is to say, everything other than Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So we have this heavy, heavy uh, emphasis on nature from the Stoics. Uh, we have the, the Christian Justinian 
cutting them off because of uh, this uh, in, you know, impression of nature. And then we have the Mayans who, like the Starks, were related to the emerald UFOs and that impact on, from Papa Votan of the December 21st being because of our lack of interdependence with nature. So all the pieces begin to fit together. And we find, not even just now, but we find how even back then, religion has been the prime culprit in separating us from the UFO force of light. The very force that the biblical book of Ezekiel referred to as the glory of God in cherubim. Remember, that same UFO emerald force. And say, so how can I say it was the same force? Because the force leader in the emerald tablet had an inkhorn hanging on his left side, and the force leader in the book of Ezekiel had an inkhorn hanging on his left side. So it's the same force. And that force, the Bible called the glory of God and the cherubims, and that's the very thing that the Christian Justinian cut off um, in, in, in setting down those philosophy skills. So we look around, and you see the disregard for nature throughout the world. It begins to become clear why. Now, we found in the connection to Kabbalah, when we had that diagram up, that it referenced Hermetic Kabbalah. And we looked at the diagram, and we saw the listing, I'm going to put that word up here, of Hermetics. Okay, Hermetics. And that directly connects, obviously, to Hermes, who directly connects to Toth, who directly connects to the UFO alien. So well, let us get to know Hermes a little bit, okay? Let's see. Now, John, Hermes, pronounced Hermes, is the messenger of the gods in Greek mythology, as well as a guide to the underworld. Well, you know, uh, if you remember the initial uh, work of uh, the Emerald Tablet, uh, Toph says, we are messengers from the sun. So Hermes fits right in. Now, in the Emerald Tablet, it says, he taught me the path to Amenti, the underworld. So you see the connection? Toph as the uh, UFO commander says, he taught me the path to the underworld. And then Hermes in the Greek is the messenger of the god as well as a guide to the underworld. Now, there is another thing on here that I, I have to share with you which is um, quite amazing. And I have to prepare you for this last paragraph. Many years ago, um, this was known as the Christian Village Church, right? <laughs> For various reasons, it was changed to hidden meanings. I want you to consider Hermes. I want you to consider, consider Toth and the commander of the alien emerald UFO force. And now consider this. Hermes is a messenger from the gods to humans. Hermes gives our word hermeneutics for the art of interpreting hidden meanings. When I saw that, the first thing I had to do was rush out and get to Joan. I'm yelling through the house, Whoa, hey, do you see this one? You ain't going to put We got it all here. We got the hidden meanings. It's a sign out over the door. We got the sign of eight, which is that. And now we've connected to the UFO alien commander who actually was the messenger from the other galaxy. And that gives us the word hermeneutics. And that's what we do here. We are hermeneutics. We interpret hidden meanings. So if anybody tells you, uh, put down what's your religion? Uh, you put down hermeneutics. Uh. Isn't that amazing, though? I mean, you're thinking all of this stuff that we're doing. Here we are. Well, consider that. Now, notice where it says Hermes is the messenger from the gods to humans. How that flows with the initial statement of the emerald tablet or higher alien force because the messenger for the God. Now, John, what does it say? 
This is from the initial emerald tablet. Gather my people. Take them by the art you have learned across the waters until you reach the land of the hairy barbarians dwelling in caves. Follow the plan. Then I spoke to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying, we were children of the sun and its messengers. And so there is, is, is the confirmation. Now, you've got a connection there. How many, how many times do we show this slide of the connection between Toth, Hermes, uh, the uh, alien uh, UFO commander, and Jesus. Look at, look at the messages. Let's run them real, uh, run through them real quick. The aliens in white. The river of life flows eternally. Jesus, flo out of me flows rivers of living water. The alien, I will descend, I will return. Jesus, I go away and come again unto you. The alien, strong were we with the power from the eternal fire. John the Baptist, he shall baptize you with fire. The alien, they linked with the children of light. Jesus, believe in the light, you may be children of light. The alien, I dwelt in the land of Chem doing great works. Jesus, the Father will show greater works. Alien, I go to come face to face with the dweller. Jesus, I go to him that sent me. The alien, lift your, Lord, your eyes towards the light. And Jesus says, he that follow me. He says, like the same guy. The same stuff. Now, I mean, you know, it, you, you can say, well, you know, maybe this guy copied this from J Jesus and put it. And that's what that Christian would tell you. This guy copied this from the Bible and put it in the Emerald Town. But, you know, how did he get it into the Kabbalah and all of this stuff? See? So the alien force comes from Chem, which is present-day Egypt, and the Bible says of, Ye of Jesus, out of Egypt, I have called my son. The Coptic Gnostics of Egypt says Jesus gave them the key, and the key is the wheel of eight. And Toth was known as the god of eight from Hermopolis, which is the city of eight. Jesus was friends with John the Baptist, who formerly was Elijah, who flew in a UFO. In fact, he left Earth in a UFO. And so now we see Hermes as the Greek version of Toth, who's really the alien. And there is something very interesting here about the Jesus-Toth-Hermes connection found in the encyclopedia. Now... This is where I introduce you to another character who is, well, I'm not going to write it because it's Hermes Trismegistus, T-R-I-S-M-E-G-I-S-T-U-S, -E okay? Now, just a minute. Here's where this guy comes in. The Egyptians said it's Toth, okay? The Greeks said it's Hermes. Then along came the Hellenists, and they said, it's the same. They're the same person, and they called it Hermes Trismegistus. Let's look. Hermes Trismegistus, thrice great. Do you know what that means? Three persons in one. Latin Mercurius Maximus. You know why? Because we got another group that's getting involved here. And these are the Romans, and they call the same guy Mercury, who flies around with wings on his hat and wings on his shoes and can fly through the sky. Makes sense. UFO. He's the com representation, representation of the combination of the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Toth in Hellenistic Egypt. The Greeks recognized the congruence, which means sameness, of the god Hermes with the Egyptian god Toth. Subsequently, the two gods were worshipped as one in what had been the temple of Toth in Kemu, which the Greeks called Hermopolis. This is very important when we consider this alien UFO leader from the land of Chem with a direct connection to the Bible and to Jesus. Here we see that the Hellenist saw that Toth and Hermes were definitely the same person. And we know why it's critical. Because the people, the Hellenists, who 
believe that Toth and Hermes were the same person from the UFO are the people that wrote the Bible. The Hellenist, under the direction of the Greek Ptolemies, wrote the Bible. Both the Old Testament, known as the Septuagint, and the New Testament. If the words of Jesus match the words of Toth Hermes, which I just showed you they do, and if the stories in the Bible exist about UFOs, then they do. Do you see why? Why? Because the people that wrote the Bible were followers of Hermes Trismegistus, who, going way back, was the guy that commanded the UFO fleet. Get it deep in your head. The writers of the Bible were followers of the Emerald UFO officer they called Hermes Trismegistus. Notice the temples in Camu, which is the land of Chem. And notice the name of it, Hermopolis, which is the city of eight. And notice, remember, Jesus gave the Coptic Gnostics in Egypt the sign of eight. And once again, think of that. Thrice great Hermes is three in one, which you have in the Jesus story, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's where it came from. Your God, your angels, your spirits, all of this stuff are actually alien forces that came with UFOs and landed before there was a place even known as Egypt. Now let me show you this. Here, um, these tablets concerning what was, was found in some of these older tablets. They were found in Pylos and Gnosis. Appears the name of the deity Hermes, but not in any apparent connection with Trisha. This interpretation, poorly understood Mycenaean material, Hermes is not referenced. Now this is so doggone important. Hermes is not referenced in well-documented, archaic, and classical time, and only emerges in Hellenistic Egypt. The UFO leader is not acknowledged and only emerges in Hellenistic Egypt, which is where the Hellenists wrote the Bible. Hermes Trismegistus is described in the Corpus Hermeticum in Urim. Uh, Eurymorous fashion, which that's a Greek mythographer who does, he did what I do now. He, uh, he treats mythological accounts as a reflection of actual history. But look what they call Hermes Trismegistus, the, the, um, uh. the uh, Hellenist who wrote the Bible. A man who became a god or a man who was the son of God. Same guy, the UFO leader, the son of God. Now, you, you know, no matter what you do, you can't change the fact that the Hellenists wrote the Bible. They did. And no matter what you do, you can't change the fact that there was nothing ever known of Hermes Trismegistus until the Hellenists came along. And no matter what you do, you can't change the fact that they're saying this was the son of God, Hermes Trismegistus, Three persons in one God. So who was Jesus? That's great stuff. That is great stuff. So let's all pause. <sighs> Take a breath. Because we've reached the point of finding where everything we have ever learned in our lives, God, angels, where to come from, who it was, who was involved. And look at that slide very deeply again. Hermes Trismegistus was the man who was the son of God. And then raising your eyes up, Hermes Trismegistus only emerges in Hellenistic Egypt. So Toth and Hermes are one and the same according to the Hellenists, which means that Trismegistus, who was the son of God, was Toth who came to earth and a UFO. That's what this is saying. This is saying that the Hellenists said that Trismegistus came to Earth and a UFO. And that winds up being the Son of God, three persons is one. Now notice, only does that Trismegistus show up with the Hellenists because we are connecting the Bible, we're connecting Jesus with the Emerald UFO force, 
And in order to do that, we've got to understand the hell of it. You know, when I did this long ago, back in 622, I showed you the definition of Hellenist, and I used a Christian, uh, you know, website, and I admitted the Bible was written by Hellenists. I, was a, I presented a Christian understanding that showed people from Israel and other areas came to Egypt, worked with the Greek mythologists under the Ptolemies, reported to Alexander the Great in creating the Bible. And, and this is what I showed you, and this is from the. Uh, 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 Christian website. Hellenism, originally used about 16th century to refer to Greek-speaking Jews as opposed to Hebrew-speaking Jews, people that came from many different cultures and embraced the Greek civilization. So we found that they came to Alexandria, submitted to Greek authority, learned Greek literature and mythology, and we found that they wrote the Bible in Alexandria, Egypt, which the Emerald Tablet spoke of as the land of Chem. That's where the Bible came. Now, it was Hellenists who wrote the Bible. They identified the UFO leader as the Son of God and three persons. So the plot thickens. More players become involved. And, and now it looks like a worldwide UFO invasion which touches everything. So where are we? Let's take a look. We got the Emerald UFO Force Land of Chem, Egypt. We got Egypt recording Toth as the leader, Greece recording Hermes as the leader, the Hellenists combining Toth and Hermes as Hermes Trismegistus, as son of God and three persons in one. We got the Hellenists <laughs> writing the Bible with stories of UFOs, aliens, and Jesus as the son of God and three persons in one. I mean, you know, it should start to all ring a big bell. Now, the part about Hellenists acknowledging Toth and Hermes, Emerald UFO, and writing the Bible is so intensely interesting because we all wondered, you know, who, where did this stuff come from? You know? You never in your life dreamed it could be coming from. I mean, Jesus could be a UFO alien guy, a commander of the UFO. But I had, you know, I, I didn't want to bring back another Christian. So I had to develop a source that would be more credible to me and more credible to you than the Christian source. I wanted to find a Jewish source writing about Hellenists. So there'd be no doubt whatsoever concerning who they were and their involvement in the Bible. And I found a source that you can find too. It's called JewishEncyclopedia.com. We're not making anything up. But if we're going to understand what we're really dealing with, we have to understand Jewish historical statements about Hellenists, about the Bible. So let's look at Jewish history concerning those who gave up Judaism to involve themselves with the Greeks. So here's your question. Was the Bible written with Hellenists to acknowledge the alien UFO force commander? Did the writers write the Bible under Greek influence and fill it with symbols, myths, and allegories? Did these Hellenists put things in the Bible that had nothing to do with Judaism? So let's go to the Jewish Encyclopedia, and we'll look up the word Hellenism. Hellenism is a word used to express the assimilation coming together, that is, of the Jews, by the Jews, of Greek speech, manners, and culture from the 4th century, Peace it through the first centuries of the common. Judaism regarded it as their chief task to preserve their religion uncontaminated, a task that required the strict separation of the congregation from all foreign people. The separation was especially difficult to maintain when the victorious campaign of Alexander the Great linked the East to the West. The victory, now look at this, the victory was not simply a political one. Its spiritual influence was much greater. The Greek language became a common language for nearer Asia, and with the language came Greek culture, Greek art, and Greek thought. So what do you find out first? Hellenism, basically an invasion into the Jewish culture 
of Greek thought. Let's go to the Jewish Encyclopedia next. The Hellenic influence pervaded everything. And even in the very strongholds of Judaism, it modified the organization of the state, the laws, public affairs, art, science, affecting ordinary things of life. It was a denationalizing influence from the strictly Jewish point of view. This was the principal reason for the dislike which many Jewish teachers felt for things Hellenic. Now look at this. It led its new votaries to the highest flights of philosophy. How? Through the allegorical explanations coming from what? Stoicism. Were applied to what? The Bible. Especially where? Alexandria. A real danger menaced the development of Jewish life and thought if you ever needed proof, there it is. From the Jewish Encyclopedia, and you can go read it for yourself. Judaism having a big problem with these people because they were putting allegory in the Bible, which came out of Alexandria, which we've told you over and over again was where the Bible was written, and now the Jewish Encyclopedia confirms it. Do you remember how in talking about Greek science masters, and I told you a little earlier, I talked about Zeno. He taught quantum physics. 4,000 years ago. Who the heck taught him this stuff? Remember? Zeno taught that? Look at this slide again, and you'll see the Jewish concern about the Bible translations being made in Alexandria, Egypt, with allegorical influences coming from Stoicism. Who is putting something into the Bible in symbols and messages from Stoicism? Let's look at that, John. Stoicism was a school of Hellenistic philosophy founded in Athens by who? Zeno. What does he, Zeno, say God is light, which means God is a photon? Why? Because that's what he taught. The Stoics consider it destructible. We've done that. It's virtuous to maintain a will that is in accord with nature. And in the bottom it says, Paco Votan knew that a humanity would be disconnected from the laws of the natural world. So you see how here we have Hellenistic philosophy, which wrote the Bible in symbols and allegory, and got Judaism very upset. And then this Stoic philosophy, which all came from the UFO guys, winds up in the Mayan places, and Pachel Votan speaks of it about nature. So we have proof of quantum physics involved in the Bible, because Judaism was upset about it, and it was put in by the Greek quantum physicist Zeno, Stoicism. So based on the Jewish encyclopedia, we've connected quantum physics with the Bible, Zeno, Paco, Votan. And let's go back and look at this Jewish encyclopedia once again. The Hellenic influence pervaded everything. Everything. Then did I just do that, I think? Allegorically. Now notice the concerns of the Jews concerning allegorical explanations. Look carefully about allegory. You see where it says that? It led to new votaries to the highest flights of philosophy, but through the allegorical explanations coming from Stoicism were applied to the Bible in Alexandria. Allegory. They were upset about that because that's what the Hellenists were doing. Let's look at the Bible. Galatians, it's written... Abraham had two sons, but he was of the bondwoman, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are what? An allegory. You see? The very thing that Judaism was freaking out about that the Hellenists were doing. And the people that were doing this were the same people that said Hermes and Toth were the same person who came from the land of Chem, from the land of the UFO. So what have we proved through the Jewish encyclopedia? 
the Hellenists wrote the Bible in Alexandria, placed allegory in it. We saw the allegory with our own eyes. Now, but, but, but let's just continue for a few minutes because the Jewish encyclopedia concerning the Hellenists, because remember, our search with them concerns their acknowledging the commander of the Emerald Force as Hermes Trismegistus, the son of God, and now we're saying, wait a minute, the people that acknowledge this are the ones that wrote the Bible. So then we can understand why there's a book in the Bible about UFOs and aliens, which is in Ezekiel, and we can understand the story about Elijah taking off in a UFO. Let's go back to the Jewish Encyclopedia, John. For this reason, the Hellenists are called wicked. Sinners, scoffers. It was in Alexandria that Jewish Hellenism reached its greatest development. And here, freed from national bonds, Hellenistic Judaism became more Hellenistic than Jewish. Egypt is the classical home of Hellenism. Egypt is the classical home of the emerald and the UFO. The Hellenistic Jew literature is the best evidence of the influence exercised by Greek thought upon the people of the book, people of the Bible. The first need for the Hellenistic Jews in Alexandria was a Greek translation of the Bible. So see Judaism really coming against because these people are working so close with the Greek mythologists in Alexandria. So we understand the involvement here. And notice how the encyclopedia notes the influence of Greek thought, meaning the Greek mythological influence becomes paramount in the minds of the people of the Bible, which we've said here all along. Let's get back quick to the Jewish encyclopedia. John. Judaism couldn't appreciate for any length of time the Greek Bible. Now look at this next one. And the preservation of the Septuagint, which is the Greek, is due to the Christian church, which was first founded among Greek speaking people. They declared that the day, now this is the Jews, the Jews declared the day when the Bible had been translated into Greek was as faithful as that on which the golden calf had been worshipped. That at this time was darkness had come upon Egypt and they appointed the 8th of Tebet as a fast day. Not only was the study of the Greek Bible forbidden, but also the study of the Greek language and literature after the war with Titus, no Jew was allowed to permit his son to learn Greek. So the abandonment of the Greek Bible by the Jews and a statement, the reason the Greek Bible of allegory continued was because of the Christian church. Real quick, we wrap up the Jewish encyclopedia. The Jews outside of Palestine were so different from the people among whom they lived. They'd all become mythologists now. The Jewish customs were strange and their religious observances provoked the derision of the Greeks who gave expression to their views in satire allusions to Jewish history, even in malicious fabrication. So what they're saying is stuff in the Bible the Greeks made up. Maybe they did. So there's the Jewish Bible attacking Greek Hellenists. So you know now who the Hellenists were. You know they wrote the Bible. You know, they filled it with symbols and allegory. This infuriated the Jews. And you know also that the same people that wrote the Bible acknowledged the Emerald UFO force. Now, the Hellenistic Bible is the one that we use today. That's the one used by Western nations. And it was announced publicly by the Greek Aristius. And look what he says. This is really neat. Look what it says about it. Aristius. By the advice of Demetrius Valerius, chief librarian of Ptolemy Philadelphus, these are other Greek, the king decided to include in his library a translation of the Jewish law book. In other words, we're going to translate it, but we're going to change it. The letter was written at a period which the translation had already exerted wide influence. Of special importance is a passage in the prologue to Jesus Cyric, wherein the latter's grandson excuses the imperfections of his translation by stating, the Greek translation of the law, the prophets, and other books varies considerably from the original Hebrew. That is the book that is kissed today. It is 
filled with Greek mythology, which I have told you for years. So we have a thorough understanding from the Jewish encyclopedia. The Hellenists wrote the Bible. The Hellenists acknowledged the UFO forces. We know that Toth was the commander and all of that business. And then we know the Hellenists of Greek, Alexandria, Egypt, called the leader Hermes Trismegistus. And I, let's look at that one last time to just see that slide. Hermes, Her Hermes Trismegistus described as a man who was the son of God and three in one. Only emerges there, three in one. So when we consider the New Testament also written in Alexandria by Hellenists, its reference to Jesus as Son of God in three and one, can we open our minds wide enough to take the possibility in determining where all of these things that we have been led to believe as gospel came from? Very easy for everybody to come down on as skeptics and everything. And they never do it when it comes to religion. They just show up on Sunday and bow their heads. Just, oh, wow, I mean, what are you going to do? UFOs came down? Who's going to believe that? I'm going to church where the snakes talk to the lady. So one has to ask, why should this talk of extraterrestrial involvement seem so bizarre and yet these strange religious stories Let's, real quick, I only have two more slides. Hermes Trismegistus, let me look at this. Toth and Hermes revealed to humankind the healing arts, magic, writing, astrology, science, and philosophy. According to legend, Hermes is said to have provided the wisdom of light. He carried an emerald upon which was recorded all philosophy and the caduceus, the symbol of mystical illumination. So what was written is that all science and philosophy came from this one source, which was the UFO officer. And then we make the mystical connection he with Mercury. Come, from the beginning, Mercury had essentially the same aspects as Hermes. Winged shoes, winged hat, caduceus, staff, two entwined snakes that was Apollo's gift to Hermes. Cicero mentions Mercury, Hermes, as the son of the Nile, whose name may not be spoken oh, yeah, by the Egyptians. Right, right. The word mercurial is commonly used to refer to something or someone erratic, volatile, unstable, derived from Mercury's swift flights from place to place. Mercury flying whoosh, from place to place. Hermes flying, Toth flying, the alien UFO commander flying from place to place and in the mythology pictured with wings. It, to me, connects. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.